Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to the JLL Coaching Pod. Now, you're in the gym or you're playing a sport and your wrist starts to hurt. Your knee starts to hurt. Something starts to hurt. This is typical. I've never met anyone in my life who's gone through the process of trying to do some kind of physical activity and somewhere along that journey hasn't been confronted with pain in some form or another. And I think that's typical of life. Like, again, universal principles, expansion, compression. You can't always just fly through things unscathed. The world is ugly and it will throw stuff back at your face. God, we're going deep. We're just coming off the bat. Ice coffee. Let's go. Now, this is a topic that I am incredibly passionate about. Pain is just a fascinating thing. My favorite thing when I think about pain, or my my favorite sounds horrible, but like the, the thing that is so intriguing about pain is talking about phantom limb pain. Now, this is when you've got someone who's had a limb amputated but they can still feel the pain in the limb that is no longer there. Now that, that kind of information to me, like you've got no arm, but you can still feel pain as if you have an arm there. That to me is just like opens up the complexities of pain. Because imagine, imagine you don't even have a thing, but you perceive in your own subjective experience of life of having pain in that thing that you no longer have that is just it's it's beautiful and it's and it's harsh and I can't even imagine going through something like that that is so tough but it opens up this conversation of what is pain in itself and it really is the subjective experience that we kind of perceive in our consciousness and it doesn't have to be anything truly physical in terms of an actual damage to any tissue um it can just be a a signal and the signal can be wrong in our head which is just a really exciting topic and everyone goes through this there's no one who tra- and to be honest if you're like if you're listening to this and you're like well I've never had a niggle I've never had any pain it's because you're not training properly you're not training hard enough you're probably not making the best progress in the world or you've just started something along those lines or you've never really pushed sport. The gym, you can be very calculated and if anything starts to feel uncomfortable, you can stop and not push through and then you might avoid it. But even then, I just think it's part of the human experience to go through pain. And again, it's all relative. Um, but what we're going to talk about today is what the hell, what do you do when you've got that pain? Like you step up, you're like, all right, I'm going to bench press the world today. And then your shoulders in a bit of a bit of pain afterwards. Um, some of my, I've had like so many bloody periods of pain in my life. Poor me. <laughs> I'm only messing around, but um, I would suggest, I would say like it just has such an influence of the quality of your life and how you feel about things going through pain every day. It is absolutely brutal. There's no taking that away from anyone and anyone who's really kind of dealt with that will understand what I'm talking about. Um, And today we're going to kind of talk about what to do. My philosophy, I'm not a physio at all, but I'm obsessed with learning about this topic And I hope there can be some value here. I've helped myself get out of pain. I've actually worked with a physio once or twice. And that was over six, seven years ago. That was the last time I worked with a physio. In a one-on-one basis. I'm the client, you're my physio. That kind of vibe. Um, And I had mixed results from that kind of stuff back in the days of it now I learn a bunch from David Gray and other physios in the kind of fitness space um but I've learned a lot along the way a lot a lot a lot a lot a lot and I'm just going to share my thoughts and I'll tell the stories of like how 
I've kind of come to have pain. Sorry, this iced coffee is just going down swimmingly. Um, so the most recent pain in my body that I've had that was kind of like substantial. There's always a something, but some some something substantial was from jujitsu. And I remember I was benching a lot of the time, barbell bench pressing, pursuing that 120 kilo bench press. I didn't get it. It's just to kind of break the story there for you. I never got there, but we got close. We got close. I think one 10 kilos for two reps was my best. I think I hit 115 for one, potentially, definitely 112. But at some point, I'll retest. Probably towards the end of this year, I will hit 120 on the bench, putting that out there. 140 on the front squat, big numbers. Anyway, back to the story. I was benching a lot, and I was doing loads of jujitsu. And I mean a lot. I was starting the day at, starting work at 7 a.m. So 7 in the morning, so I had to get there, got up at 5, whatnot. Even before 5, I think, sometimes, to actually make it. Make sure I wasn't late, because you can't be late. So I was waking up super early, very tired, and then jujitsu would start at five or six six o'clock is when it started and it was two hours this is every monday two hours of jiu-jitsu the first hour was a class the second hour was sparring and listen when i say this i'm an idiot so that's that second hour i'm going balls to the walls i can't control myself i'm a noob I am using way too much strength rather than technique and just being like a, an idiot. Big ego, don't want to get hurt, don't want to lose, very competitive, you're one-on-one -on -one sparring, it's a brutal environment. Anyway, during that period, and I would do that Monday, Tuesday, try and get some more rolls throughout the week after that, so two hours of jiu-jitsu, and I would train during the days, I'd lift weights during the days, so lots of volume, Lots of training. I loved it. But the fatigue was massive. When you're picking up a new sport, particularly a combat sport, it will knock your socks off. It will take you down to the dungeons and beat you to a pulp with regards to fatigue. And I was chasing PBs in the gym. Now, when I tell you this is just stupido, you just you can listen, please. Um... So naturally, about after a few months of doing this, I was rolling with a guy, I can't remember his name. Sorry, dude, You're probably not listening, but sorry, I forgot your name. And oh, I was rolling with a guy called Josh first, and we were going hard. He's big guy, bigger than me, weighs a bit more, and as strong and athletic, like, if not more. Done jiu-jitsu for a few more years, but he's just come back. I would say Prob's big ego as well, so we were kind of both going at it. And I was holding a lot of like intense positions and squeezing the arms and using a lot of strength. And you're always in like weird positions in jujitsu. Um, so my, my kind of, I was really internally rotated and trying to put in a lot of pressure on a headlock, at, on a guillotine. And I held that. I think it, like, I couldn't get the tap. And I think I was holding it for like, it's, it felt like a while. The round was only five and a half minutes, something like that. But I just felt like my shoulder was compromised. And then the next roll, I just felt a <coughs> something along those lines <laughs> in my neck, in my shoulder. And after that, I just had down the left side of my neck and my shoulder some pretty bad pain for about six, four or five months, something like that. Four, five, six months. Couldn't really barbell bench without it kind of coming back up. Um, everything was a little bit weird. And yeah, kind of tailed out of jiu-jitsu. Just honestly, because I've got work to do. I'm a PT. I've got to pick up weights for my clients. I need the body. And I couldn't, I couldn't manage the sport psychologically. It couldn't fit into my life. It took too much energy from other things. So I stopped that. Over that period, those months, I came out of pain. Like now I can do whatever I want with my shoulder. I'm playing a bunch of padel tennis. That's my new obsession. And hitting PBs in the gym. I PB'd the 
dumbbell bench press, got the 50 kgs, and I'm back. And along the way, what did I do to get rid of this kind of thing? And what is my philosophy about you're in pain? Because typically, I think what what I hear from friends who are kind of they train a lot, but they're not physios, they're not PTs, they're not in this world of fitness. They'll they'll often say, "I need rest." That's what everyone says. I need rest. Rest is what I need. And acutely, that might be the answer. Very acutely. And I mean for like a night. You might need to not do stuff instantly for that evening. But the next day, any physio worth his salt will say, let's get back in there. Let's figure out what the problem is. And let's get back in there and start building you back up. Because rest, just resting alone, takes into consideration the assumption that that injury just happened because you did too much of something. And if you take away that stimulus or that stress of or load that you put on the body, you will get better. And then going back, you haven't changed anything. You haven't changed your training. You haven't trained... You haven't changed what you're doing. You just go straight back a few weeks later or however long you want to rest, a couple of days, and expect your expectations are, because I've rested, I will now be fine. But generally, an injury will come from too much stress on a system and it can't handle that. And there are different ways to manage that stress on a system. An example of this is if you... The reason why you would build out a team in a business is so you can share the load. So you can share the load of the stress of the demands of the business. Just like in sport, you would want to, the best athletes, share the demands of the sport around their body, around their team. You can't go 100% all the time. You can't just use your bicep when you are bench pressing. You need to... Spread the load, the demands across the across your different systems, your different muscles equally. And a reason why a tendon can take too much load or a muscle can take too much load is because other tissues aren't taking part. They aren't doing their job. They're not taking the demands. They're not taking the stresses. And therefore, a particular tissue or tendon can take an overload. And then naturally... The solution there isn't rest, it's rather relearning or repositioning your body to spread the demands more evenly. And rest will never solve that problem. I won't say never, the likelihood that rest will solve that problem of sharing the load is exceptionally low. Because you need to reorganize your body, retrain the systems all together to spread that load evenly and fairly. So your body can manage the sport. Um, And that is the main thing is why you wouldn't just rest. Typically, whenever anyone's got an injury, you've got to face it head on. Uh, One of my clients, um, I'll call him T-Dog. To keep him confidential. He's he's an amazing guy. He's the best guy. And I asked him, he's very successful, I asked him what his uh, principles are for work. And one of them is, you got to face the fire head on. If there is an issue, you have to deal with it. Go into that issue, face the issue and handle it. Rest is running away. You need to look at the issue and dive in and kind of figure it out and solve the problem. You can't just put pull wool over your eyes and expect it to go away. That's not how the world works. It might work sometimes, but we are looking for a high level of probability of success with these kind of things like pain. And in order to get those outcomes, you best believe we got to face it head on. So you've got pain. Rest isn't the answer. I would love some comments and feedback there if you disagree, by the way, because I think I'm very open to the discussion. Um, I've got one friend in mind in particular, Jacob. You need to stop resting and start doing stuff. His name is the same as mine. Um, and that's who I'm speaking to. But face face the fire head on. And then what, what, do you, what do you actually do? 
to go around this training, I think the first thing is to figure out, do you have any um, relative motion issues? Do you have any range of motion issues when you externally rotate? You can't see, but when you externally rotate at the shoulder, does that elicit pain? Like which movements elicit pain? Figuring out why. Why do they cause pain? It's not super necessary, but is there particular movements that cause pain? And then, do you have any mobility limitations? For example, can you not fully externally rotate the shoulder? We'll keep it with the shoulder. Can you fully externally rotate the shoulder? Yes or no. If you're missing some typical range of motion there, if you can't get to 90 degrees, potentially helping to regain that range of motion and retraining the central nervous system, the musculoskeletal system to kind of be in these ranges again without pain will again build trust in your body and help you remove that pain from the system. So first things you've got to check, like what, how's the range of motion? Can you move in and out of typical ranges without eliciting pain? Or what is eliciting pain? And then you want to go about regaining that range of motion. Now, when I say regaining range of motion, typically people think, oh, well, easy. I'll stretch it. I'll stretch the tissues, the tissues that are holding me back from reaching these ranges of motion. The issue with that is when I'm measuring ranges of motion, I'm talking about the orientations of the bones, not the tissues. And simply just stretching a, a individual tissue, isolating a tissue, say the shoulder, and just stretching it overhead. I see this all the time. People will band up their shoulder. CrossFit people love this. Band up their shoulder and just pull it back. Yep. Just pull it back. Yep. Pull it back nice and hard. Oh, that feels uncomfortable. Stretch. Done. Range of motion received. And there is loads of literature that that might work. But I would actually argue that those studies are missing the main point because with true range of motion if you're doing a good quality table test you need to change the position of the bones that is really how real true range of motion is measured rather than just stretching a muscle tissue out you need to kind of move the bones around and that's how we really create movement in our body um a beautiful way of thinking about this is um, bones come first. Before we have a really developed musculoskeletal system, before we have a really developed muscle system, um, again, combined with the central nervous system, these are complex dynamic systems that work together, we had bones. Babies can't really do anything. They just lie on their back. But as they get more evolved and they become more competent at moving have more movement options their musculoskeletal their muscle system starts to develop alongside their central nervous system but they always have bones um so bones come first and to reorientate the bones there's loads of things you can do the easiest way to do it though is to relax the muscle system the muscle system that keep fixing you you might feel loads of tension when you've got an injury or some pain you're like all right got to keep the core tight I've got back pain so people will be flexing their core really hard the whole time even when they're picking up a pen to kind of protect their spine or whatever the reality is that will just cause a lot of tightness and tension around the joints and you need to let that tension go don't fight tension with tension is a huge principle from David Gray in order to regain range of motion so to create that range of motion, the best way to do it is create a relaxing environment in the body. Using breath is the easiest way to do that. Nice, long, slow exhales and really relaxed inhales to just get the body and the tissue, muscle tissues really relaxed so the bones can move through a nice bit of range of motion. And, and again, creating that relative motion at joints, opening up spaces in the body where there's not space, so say I can't externally rotate the, the, um, the shoulder fully, 
If I do some nice inhales and exhales, get the rib cage, the scapula, the clavicle, the humerus moving together with the breath without all these big tissues, the neck, the pecs and the lats working too hard, just letting them be soft, no tension, I can regain some range of motion at the shoulder. So breathing to reorganize the skeleton, that is huge to just create that relative range of motion. Once you've created that range of motion, it might even help with the pain short term. This is very something very typical I see. I trained my dad yesterday, he's dealing with some hip pain. We took him through some really relaxed breathing and the pain subsides. It's acute, but we create a bit of range of motion at the hip or the shoulder, wherever you want it to be. But relaxing the skeleton, relaxing the muscle system allows the skeleton to move, to create range of motion. And what that enables us to do is to go into these positions that potentially we had pain before and get some good training in there. So this is where I like to start with light throws, ball throws, just kind of moving into that new range with a bit of a bit of speed, just getting the central new nervous system used to being in that kind of orientation or that position again, rather than being super freaked out and like, oh, I've got pain here, I can't move here, opening that up to a new bit of stimulus and training. It's so just kind of easy, light ball throws against the wall, that kind of stuff. You can do super light plyometrics as well as isometrics through those new ranges that you've just created. And that will help strengthen the tendons back up, get the central nervous system used to a bit of training and create that environment where the brain thinks it's okay for the body to be there. Because once you've got that pain, there will be a pathway developed a signal, a message from that area of the body to the brain that I have pain, even or an issue and I should avoid it. Even if you don't have any actual injury there, your brain might tell you that, which is part of this psychological aspect, the mindset, which is so big when people have injuries, because you might not have any issues or pains. You might have full range of motion. You might not have a limb there anymore, but you still deal with pain. And getting past that psychological aspect is so huge. So again, you've got to build up the confidence again doing these lighter drills. But once you've opened up the range of motion, you need to start training that new range to maintain it and build up that confidence again. I've talked about this a lot on the pod, and that is the Nassim Taleb anti-fragile mentality. Just need another sip of coffee. I don't know if you can hear the ice, but that to me is so satisfying. Love it. Oh, coffee. Great for the soul. Um, so you've got to, cre yeah, create that space. Open things up by releasing tension in the tissues and creating changes in the bones. M getting those bones to move into areas where they might not have moved in a while. Then get the central nervous system used to being in there by doing things like throwing balls easily. If it's external rotation, if it's overhead flexion, shoulder flexion with the arm, getting the body used to being there. And then doing things like isometrics in those positions and plyometrics to develop the tendons and develop those tissues. Co-contractions are a huge part of the isometrics. So getting the muscles around the pain to work together and teaching them to share the load. So with shoulder injuries, you want the forearms, the biceps and the shoulders working together, spreading the load in an isometric fashion to let the body know, hey, we're fine in this range of motion. We're fine hanging out here. We can get work done without causing pain. And that's huge for that psychological aspect isometrics. You can get sweaty. You can get some burn in the tissues there without getting any pain. Um, so what to do when we're in pain, pain is typical. It's part of the process. What kind of pain is it? Should you probably just ignore it potentially if it's just a little niggle and keep training through probably the best bet short term catastrophizing any kind of pain just makes it worse. And I've been there 
some I've talked about it in my back pain episode. Like you can dive into that and have a little listen about my story there. Um, but don't catastrophize it, even if you feel like it is a bad one, quote unquote. Just to hit, hit, like going into the fire, facing it head on, will help deal with most of the problems anyway. Um, yeah, create the biomechanical positions. Let joints open up, not with stretching, but again with breathing, with creating these mobility. Um, relative motion at different angles, different joints, and then training them easily, light stuff to get the central nervous system going, creating, doing isometrics and then plyos and typical strength and hypertrophy training to get that body used to those positions again. Anti-fragility is the answer. Your body can take a beating and come back. That is who we are. We are survivors. That is the human being. Everything that kind of, it's the same thing that is theorized to happen. It's not completely true, but you, you work, you challenge, you stimulate the body and it can come back better. Same thing with pain. You have an injury, you can always come back from it in some way or, or another. Hope you enjoyed the pod. Hope you got some value out of, it, out of it. Please let me know if you have any questions and open for discussion on all of these topics. Hope you have a great day. Thanks for listening.